Hey everyone, it's Crash Knife Fight, and I'm here with my first impressions of the new game mode, Capital Supremacy, and the new special units, The Infiltrator. There is good and bad about both of these, and while I feel there is far more good than bad, I will recommend a few changes moving forward. So let's start with Capital Supremacy. Personally, I have wanted a new large map game mode for some time, and I believe I'm not in the minority when I make that request. I am happy to see DICE and EA continue to develop new content for Battlefront 2, and you can tell that they put some thought and effort into the new mode and map. The new Geonosis map looks great. It's just as beautiful as all the exterior environments and the rest of the game, and although it's a different mode, you still get that same feel of a big battle. This new location on Geonosis has a tighter feel than the map for Galactic Assault, with a lot more options for cover. The control points are well placed as to not favor one side or the other. The biggest issue I have encountered with the ground phase seems to be the result of players not really getting the idea and necessary strategy for this type of mode. In most of the games I played, both teams seemed to trade control points over and over again until one team managed to get enough tickets to advance to the next phase. The second phase of Capital Supremacy takes you to the Capital Ship interior where the invading team attempts to destroy the enemy cruiser. First, by overriding a security console to gain access to two weak points further inside the ship where charges are placed to blow it up. If the invading team fails to complete both phases before they run out of tickets, the battle returns to the surface, providing an opportunity for the other team to make it aboard the enemy ship. The ship interiors also look good, although a little bland, but that is faithful to the look of the ships from the movies and animated series. The gameplay here is much more like Galactic Assault where the team is interacting with objectives and the map itself is more linear. Now here is where I find a possible balancing issue that favors the Republic over the Separatists. Because I have only played a handful of matches, I don't want to overstate this and there are certainly other variables involved like the skill level of my team and how well any of us at this point have actually learned our way around inside these ships. The heroes and special units available to the Republic are just better in these tight interior spaces than those available to the Separatists. There is just no getting away from Anakin's abilities in these confined areas. On top of that, you have Yoda's Unleash ability allowing him to suck up blaster round after blaster round as he marches down hallways. I was also somewhat surprised to see Wookiee Warriors in this mode after their absence on the other Geonosis map, which is another issue because of their ability to lock down hallways and choke points. I would suggest removing the Wookiee Warriors and replacing Bosk with Emperor Palpatine. I understand why the developers went with Bosk instead of Palpatine. On paper, it seems balanced because you have three lightsaber users on each side and one blaster user. But you have to consider that the environment here may be favoring the heroes a bit more. Like I said, it may be too early to tell, but those two options of removing the Wookiees and swapping in Palpatine would require minimal effort to at least give it a try. My final thoughts on Capital Supremacy is it has a lot of potential, but right now the matches are long and I'm fine with it, but when you add that to the fact that we only have one map for now, players will start getting bored and I don't want this to turn into another Ewok hunt or extraction, where it was fun for a day or two, but I'll get more bang for my buck with Galactic Assault, or Heroes vs. Villains for that matter. It would be in EA's best interest to announce new maps as soon as possible if it's their intent to keep this mode viable. So let's talk about the new special units for a moment. The Commando Droid and the Arc Trooper look fantastic and both are fun to play, but the Arc Trooper is far superior to the Commando Droid. The dual wielding DC-17 Blasters is awesome. As a console player there is something very satisfying about pulling the two triggers on my controller and melting the enemy. The Shock Trap is not very powerful, but works a lot like Lando's Disruptor by tossing it, and an indicator shows you a number of how many are in range. It can help you get out of dicey situations, especially if a villain is coming for you. The Overcharge Blaster ability has a nice range and speeds to the target really quickly. I was able to get a few nice long range shots and it felt almost like Leia's secondary fire on her blaster. The Arc Trooper Scan Pulse has a short range, but it works as advertised and will help you get a jump on unsuspecting enemies. All in all, the Arc Trooper is a great addition to the special units. The BX Commando Droid, however, could use a little work. First off, the blaster needs a buff, badly. It feels so weak, and frankly, it needs its numbers upped across the board. Damage, rate of fire, range, you name it. 
If I'm playing as a special unit, regardless of whether it's an enforcer, an aerial, or a new infiltrator, I expect to have a superior blaster to normal troopers, even if it's minimal. But I don't feel this here at all. I would also like to see a tweak to the infrared scanner. The contrast between inanimate objects, walls, and enemy players is really muddy. I would like to see DICE sharpen up the contrast to make more distinction between the environment and players. I'm not a big fan of the smoke screen as it functions presently. I thought we would get a smoke grenade, something like Lando's, but this version will only deploy right in front of the droid. You can't direct it away from you, which would be nice to drop it on some players or down a hallway. The other problem with the smoke screen is that any player close to you will be unable to see through it. It might prevent the enemy from seeing you, but your teammates will be unable to deliver accurate blaster fire. Finally, the Vibro Sword, which I find to be the best part of the Commando Droid. The Vibro Sword melee ability has a quick animation and a short cooldown. It works really well when you can sneak up on an unsuspecting player, but you can also get some good swipes in against a hero. Combine that with some good dodges and you might come out victorious. I managed to kill a couple heroes with this tactic. So at the end of the day, I have enjoyed Capital Supremacy and I've enjoyed the new Infiltrator Special Units. Perhaps one more than the other. A few tweaks may help, but I will wait and see how this plays out for a few more days. Nevertheless, if EA truly wants this game mode to succeed, they need to add maps sooner rather than later and consider bringing in maps from the original trilogy and sequels as well. So I hope you all have been enjoying Capital Supremacy and the new special units. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll be back soon with a new video.